Embernic has released a bunch of devices in the XX line. There was the small vertical RG35XX Plus. Then we have the small horizontal RG35XXH. Then another RG35XX 2024, which nobody bought. The small micro RG28XX. The awesome clamshell, the RG35XX SP. The bigger horizontal RG40XXH. And finally, today, we have the seventh device in the line the Ambernic RG40XXV. Let's talk about this one. Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're gonna to be doing a review of the Ambernic RG40XXV. Okay, so if you want me to save you 10 minutes, this is the RG40XXH, but it is a vertical. That's it. That is the exact definition of what we're going to be looking at today. And if you want me to save you even more time, the XX line of devices all use the same H700 processor. The performance is the same on all seven devices. So if you've looked at any of the other devices for performance, which is up to and including some Nintendo 64, Dreamcast and PlayStation Portable, that is exactly what this can play too. And finally, I actually quite like this one. Same way I like the 40XXH. It's comfortable, it's a nice vertical, and the screen is nice. There is a lot to like here. It's just the seventh device in this line. So it's not easy to get excited about these types of devices anymore. For everybody else, let's do a quick 10 minute review. Going by just specs alone, and it is a word for word, spec for spec, equal to the Ambernic RG40XXH, which just came out a month ago. That means that this is a 4 inch 640 by 480 screen, 3200 milliamp hour battery, it has Wi Fi, it has Bluetooth, it has HDMI, and so on. So, basically, internals wise, this is a known quantity to the community. And since this is now the actual seventh device in the line, we pretty much know most of this now. Pricing wise, this is right in line with the RG40XXH. The price here is 76 US dollars shipped with my code Joey through GoGameGeek, who are also the ones that sent me this device for review, so thank you to them. This is actually decently priced when you consider there aren't many four inch vertical options on the market. If we go ahead and check my website, there is the RGB20SX and there's the RG405V. And now next week we have Ambernick's latest, the RG406V. And we'll talk about all those later. Let's do a quick tour first. Let's look at the D-pad and the buttons first, and I can confidently confirm that all of this is the same as the RG40XXH. Just take a drink at this point for every time I say this. The D-pad is the same as the one from the RG35XX Plus and the one they used in the 40XXH. And for me, this is a good D-pad. I suppose I didn't get the script to call this the best D-pad ever because we've seen this in two other devices and it is the exact same. But I guess today's model needed a certain selling point for some people, but there is nothing new here. It is a good D-pad, but it's not unique. It's not always super accurate, but I do like the looseness of it and that it's rounded, especially compared to the RG35XXH's D-pad, which was sharp and stiffer. Overall, this is a good option. The buttons are the same as the 40XXH and they feel good. Ambernick rarely ever gets buttons wrong. They do what you want them to do. They have decent travel and they feel just fine. I can't say that I have any negative or positive feeling towards the buttons. And that's probably the best compliment that I can give. The stick, not sticks, has RGB LED lighting and it is the same one that they've been using on most devices lately. It still has that same cardinal snapping direction issue, and that has been fixed on custom firmware like MUOS, and that's what I've been using here in this video. It is a test build of MUOS, but it is not fixed on stock firmware. For those unfamiliar, it basically means that on stock, the stick basically acts as a D-pad, and it has very little diagonal movement. Overall, with the fix, it becomes a normal usable stick, but on stock, I likely wouldn't use it as much. 
Now, just on the topic of the stick, and I know a lot of people are not going to agree with me here, but it just really should not exist at all. Can you imagine if that stick did not exist, how nice this would look? Clean, D-pad and buttons only, because let's face it, some people are going to use this for Nintendo 64 and PSP and Dreamcast, but it's just not a great experience on here compared to other devices. There are so many different concessions you have to make with these devices to play those games. If you just left this one, you have seven devices in this line. If you just put this one without a stick, it would have been so much better and so much cleaner because it looks so nice. The blue is really nice. The white is really nice. Just, just, we don't need the stick. Just, just get rid of the stick. Now on the back, there are the shoulder buttons. And I think a fear that a lot of us have since the Amberdeck RG405E is that these will be easy to press or they'll cause accidental presses and all of that. The answer is that these don't seem to have that issue. I actually really like the shoulders on these. They're nicely curved or ergonomic and they feel good to press. So with a vertical like this and with the uh, uniquely placed stick, let's say, how is the comfort? Well, when using it normally without the stick and just D-pad, it feels just fine. It's a bigger vertical than usual, but obviously not as big as something like the RG405V but I would say that it's actually pretty comfortable and pretty good for a vertical. And I found that I wasn't getting the usual cramping issues that I would get when I use a usual vertical. This felt good to use for long periods of time. Honestly, even using the stick feels just fine. I'm not gonna say that I wanted to use it or ended up using it off camera, but I mean, honestly, it feels okay. It's not terrible, but just don't buy this for the stick. There's so many other options that you can buy besides this. Now, I talked about it before, but we're not gonna be doing a lot of performance here. Once again, this is the seventh device in a line of devices that all have the same performance. So if you've seen one device, you have seen them all at this point. The benefit here is obviously the four inch screen, and it does play a big part in making games look better to a lot of people. Personally, I've never had that issue with three and a half inch compared to four inch screens. I like them both, but obviously if you have the option, a four inch screen is gonna be better. So like I said, this plays everything up to and including some Nintendo 64, some Sega Dreamcast, and some PlayStation Portable. I wouldn't buy it for those systems once again, which is my usual recommendation, and I would consider them bonuses. But if you want to play a lot of the older retro systems, the Super Nintendos, NES, Game Gear, Genesis, all of that sort of thing, that is exactly where this lives. This is perfect for those types of systems. If you want to tinker and have fun on a lazy Sunday, then try out Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast and PSP and all of that. Some games will run easily right away and some games you'll have a tough time with. Okay, so let's talk about the competition for this device. Now, at a three and a half inch screen, there is a million other devices, vertical even, that you could choose from in comparison to this. But like I said before, when you look at four inch screens that are vertical form factor, there is only a few. And so we'll look at a couple of them now. First up is my personal favorite in this category, and it was the RGB20SX from Pal Kitty. It has a one by one aspect ratio, 720p screen, which is very nice, and it's much better than what Ambernick is using on the RG40XXV. Processor-wise, it's using the RK3566, which is on par with the H700, and it basically just means other custom firmware options than what the 40XXV has. For example, the Pal Kitty uses ArcOS, while normally you would put MUOS on the 40XXV. The SX has a much bigger battery. It is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery compared to the 40XX's V small 3,200 milliamp hour battery. And also the SX has a second stick. Now the SX's D-pad isn't as good as the 40XX's V, but the buttons and all of that are basically the same. However, the triggers are a lot better on the 40XX's V. Then obviously we have color choices and all of that is personal preference. I think both the 40XXV's blue and white look fantastic, and I love the SX's transparent blue. The SX is currently 68 US dollars direct from Pal Kitty's AliExpress store, and so pricing wise, we're in the same ballpark for both devices. It's slightly cheaper. Now, it's very tough for me to sit here and say that the 40XXV is better than the RGB20SX. 
because on paper, the specs of the SX are so much better than the V. The bigger battery, the second stick, and all of that sort of thing, and all the other differences, it's cheaper. Make it a better choice over this on paper. The problem is this has a better D-pad and it just feels better overall. So it's tough because you're giving up a bigger battery, you're giving up a better screen, you're giving up uh, different custom firmware options that maybe a lot of people want instead of MUS, if that's your choice, but MUS is awesome. So a, a different kind of device, and it's hard to say one is better than the other, but if you want a better D-pad, better controls, I think the V wins out here. Now on the other side, the other vertical option with a four inch screen is the Ambernake RG405V. I mentioned it before, but it's a lot more powerful and Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, and PSP are on the menu and easily playable, as well as adding in some GameCube and PS2. And I say some very loosely. The battery is massive and it lasts forever thanks to Gamma OS. It runs Android, it has two sticks, and overall, it is a much better device, and it's a much bigger handheld as well. Now, obviously, this is not in the same realm price-wise. It is basically kind of double the price of what the V is. So it's a lot more expensive than the V, but I did want to mention it as another option. The fourth is Ambernick's latest offering, and it's coming next week, of course, and that's the RG406V. This is the successor to the RG405V. It's going to have a way better resolution screen, a way better processor, and it looks to be better everything over the RG405E. But once again, it is going to be a lot more expensive than the RG40XXV. Okay, so I say all of this to say that if you're in the market for a 4-inch vertical, you cannot go wrong with this. I, there's nothing here that I could say I don't recommend or none of that. This is a good option. So if you're looking at that specific niche, this is good. I have no complaints and it feels good, it plays good, all of that sort of thing. I actually quite like it. I don't have a spot in the way that I usually play daily to use this, but if I was and I did, I would use it. So put it that way. So as far as I go, it's a recommend from me. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about these retro handhelds. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.